Welcome back, everyone, to the Lobster Roll Season 2, Week 1. We're into the Losers Finals. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow here, whichever you prefer. And we are getting started pretty quick with the map bands and picks because currently we are looking at MFG and BRB back deep down to, actually, back deep down to RTW Fruity and Bloa. And we are getting into the bands already. We have Intersection now, we have Fallen Dell out, we have. Shimmer Shore out because that is always the pick for MFG because they got first pick or first ban again. So with that, Fallendale is out, Intersections out. The two maps that I would say are most conducive to the style of play MFG has been pushing for. Cobalt Dream is still an option though, and MFG does get pick. As is Shimmer Shore. So those are the two I'm expecting to see. One of the two kind of expect Cobalt Dream a little bit more just because it is smaller. It is narrower more... Well, no, it's just smaller. The ratio is about the same. And... With that, we are going to... Oh! People asking chat who go to Steam. Go to Steam actually couldn't show up. Easter Ride wasn't available, so Purple Rain is not in this week. That would be Golda, Israide, and probably Mana 12, judging by last week, the show match. So, they're not playing this week. Which gives Pro quite a lot of leeway in terms of being the favorite to win. Though, whoever wins this right now will be going on to fight them to see what happens. And we are on Cobalt Dream. So, I'm kind of curious what BRB is going to do, knowing that MFG really really wants to get that get that win. Like, they, they want to get the win off of the commanders. They want to get just three upgraded commanders coming down with support spiders, and that's it. That has been the MO for MFG pretty much this entire time. With, honestly, no exceptions. It's been... Every game we've seen of them, which has been every game in this tournament... That's been their go. Although we have only seen them on Fallen Dell. Same time, Boxy Dante going for air. Not unexpected. Not sure they're going for. Oh, Zam's going for rovers. Interesting. Not, I mean, jump bots aren't going to be useful on a map like this, so rovers make sense. Double rover and spiders. Not sure why spiders. Oh, for... Okay. Chat, thank you for pointing that out, Rar and chat. Why you're going for spiders? To have venoms to completely wreck shields. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Well, venoms and recluses both wreck shields. Tank, rover, air, though, coming in here for BRB. Much more typical strategy. And with tanks, in case there is a big commander push, cyclops are a thing. But yeah, also Double Rover I can kind of see both players going for getting early Masons pushing out. I'm not 100% sure why, though, again, Blades do exist. Not entirely sure the motivation for the plop, but... Well, there we go. <laughs> okay, if Jet's to be believed... Yeah, if Jet's to be believed, then Thirksy may not... may be as confused as I am. Uh, anyway, we have Flea coming in here. Oh, man. Look at that. Flea could have gone up there. Could have wrecked face. It could have destroyed all of those wind gens, but no. Same time, Raven coming in very quickly. Not managing to do a whole lot. Well, all right then. Same time, darts coming in around, just slowing things down a little bit as they do. Okay, well, that was a bit of a decisive battle there, but ultimately decided nothing. <laughs> Had the Scorcher gone down, that's actually quite the opening, and it does! BRB is wide open! Scorcher coming in here from Thirksy should be able to completely wreck everything if it finds anything to work with. The darts are not able to stop it. 
Mason won't be able to stop it if it goes up north and actually tracks it, but it looks like it's going to be going around the side. Known metal extractors, but hey, gets rid of the metal extractor is still value? Or not. No, never mind. Okay, well, that ended up not being quite as effective as it could have been. Same time, though, Thirksy forward their commander once again playing a very dangerous game. We saw last time that did not work out. But it's... Uh, well, it's not a situation against spiders this time, so there's potentially less of an opportunity of that backfiring. Same time, Thirksy does have their support scorchers continuing to deal damage, continuing to push. Center of the map very quickly being taken by MFG. And it's being held, too. Of course, gotta be mindful. Ro Raven's coming in here. Having a bit of trouble doing much without getting taken out themselves. Tarantula coming in to support. Nicely done there by Fruit by Rar, just to get that last second air. So having taken what they've taken, MFG is in pretty much the position they want to be in. From here, they can start upgrading their commanders. So they can take all of the metal extractors, whatever they like. And so far, there's not a whole lot that BRB has to do to really press that. I don't think how much they can do, I should say, to really press that. So that's the thing, is that it's just... What is... I'm trying to think what is the exact option to go for here, because... For BRB, they have ogres coming in. The defenders coming in from Zhao, however, are making things difficult. Our defenders coming in as a response, but Zhao again upgraded command on top of the fencer, likely to go for upgraded particle beam as well. So the Kodachi is going to have a trickier time getting around them. Overall, this is again the advantage split over to MFG. I like the use of overdrive, though. Back to Dante playing that smart, making sure that while MFG does have the territory advantage, they're not going to get a major metal advantage on account of that. But again, it's a matter of building up forces, getting the right set of units to come in and really break through, and that may not be working out. Thurk's coming into the Scorchers over the eastern side of the map, taking out all the defensive Scorchers coming out from Bloa, takes out the Fencer as well, and there's not a whole lot to stop it. The Phoenix coming in only manages to hit one Scorcher, Though that might just be enough to slow this down, and indeed it is. Putting a stop to that raid, but damage was still done. The loss of the Mason is going to slow down massively the eastern side of the map. Even leaving Blow as commander, someone on their own, not quite in enough risk, though. Have enough HP to survive at least that attack, but Thirksy's commander already at the light particle beam. Not already with a decent amount of range on it as well. And that will simply continue to grow. Same time, more Phoenix coming in. Tarantula, however, denying any any purchase for those air units, which means there is not a whole lot that has been built up that's actually going to contest anything MFG is doing. Double-checking over the western side of the map. Seeing that Zao doesn't have much. Phoenix out some of the fencers, but loses a Raven in the process. What is Pachi Dante going for right now? They have Likos. Decided, you know what? Well, we're seeing heavy units. Go for the anti-heavy units. We should be seeing Cyclops as well, potentially, very soon. No Ogres for now. Ogres, still the unit of choice. I expect we'll be seeing Cyclops fairly soon, especially as the commanders really get upgraded. But for now, no. For now, it is just throwing out the Lee code. Add that little bit extra damage. And blow his commander goes down, though. Eastern side of the map is completely open with 13 Rush Commander there along with the support forces and not a whole lot coming in from Blow to defend. It's going to be up to Bakhti of Don to try to save the day with that Liko being built up. Thirsty's commander taking a fair bit of damage, though. Raven coming in to try to provide a little bit of extra fire support. Does break things down a little bit. That Liko, however, still has another two minutes before being finished. That two minutes could be the entire rest of the game. What the? Oh, no. Not again. Anyway. Could be the entire rest of the game, and should that happen, well, that is going to be a major problem. I mean, well, that's the major problem of MFG moves on to fight against Pro again and BRB gets eliminated, but that Lico. 45 seconds left. There is time. 
MFG is not advancing quite fast enough to make that a problem yet. Same time, Fruity managing to hold a decent amount of control over the center of the map. It's tricky though. The, ro the ogres don't have a whole lot of ways of getting out. Mainly it's going to be their straight firepower because the fencers will be able to take them out as they're or will damage them as they're coming in, but they will tank the fencers enough to not die. So that is definitely a threat. Assuming they go to the fencers in the first place and don't just try to pincer Rar and Thirxy's commanders, which honestly is probably the way to go. Stands Liko up in 15 seconds. Thirxy's commander back to a decent amount of HP, but 3,000 HP is still not much. Liko's bomb is 2,000, or yeah, 2,000 a pop. But the problem isn't killing. The thing is, the Liko's bomb is going to come in. Damage 13 Rar's commander, but wipe out the support forces, allowing for all these other units to come in and basically finish the job. But no, they missed Thirsty's commander, taking a couple of the support forces, but nowhere near enough to open things up. They'll spread out by Thirsty and Rar before that bomber came in, meant that there wasn't a whole lot of damage that could be dealt. Smart thing on their part, Ogre coming in, attempting the pincer, but the Badger is simply not letting that happen. Same time, Zhao. Oh. Actually had to deal with that coming in as it was. We missed that as the Lico attack happened. Ogre coming in once again. Zhao, however, with range... But likely range boosted. And indeed, yes. Range boosted missiles. So it's not the fencers, but it is still missiles that will stop these Ogres. Emissary coming in to try to... Try to stem the tide, but it's not nearly enough. Again, 13 Rara, their commanders. The main threat here... Not sure why the Liko is targeting what it is. Bakhti Dante, like, why are you targeting small units of the Liko? I can see groups, maybe, but the commander's the real target there. Take those out and it's over. By some little token, I'm surprised we're not seeing Fruity go for Cyclops. The Ogres simply do not have the range to deal with Zao's commander. That's not happening. It is it is a graveyard. It's a meat grinder. Go in with Cyclops. That is the anti-heavy unit you want. Emissaries aren't a bad idea either, but they aren't being used to take out Zao's commander. And of course, for rovers, that is just a tricky proposition. How do you get rid of the commanders? Although, to be fair, I'm kind of surprised we aren't seeing the ravens being used much either, unless they're... No, they have line of sight. They, they have vision of the units. There's not... No need to go after the radar dots. I'm really curious why that's... Ravens are just going what they're doing it. And, yeah, Rarcom is up. As people are pointing out in the chat, 8 times range, 2 times particle beam. Which is the standard. I mean, particle beam is entirely damage mitigated by range. You add range to it, it has no weaknesses. It is just the best thing. And then throw on shields afterwards, because why not? Now, Rar's commander going for the, death, the kill blow. Or the death blow. It's, it is hit. Zao coming in on support along the side to stop the ogres from breaking out, but... Really, Rar's commander is the one finishing the job. It's gone to the factories and nothing has been set up to deal with it. Lance is being built, but it's too little too late. The factories are being wiped out. Fruity throws in the tail. Back to Dante agrees and Bloa passes the motion. And that is MFG moving on to Fight Pro. They are the winners. Nicely done. So pro against MFG in the grand finals, which point out, of course, that should the pro team win 2-0, then or 2-1, 2-0 or 2-1, they will win. Otherwise, if MFG wins or wins this 2-0, 2-1, best of three, they are going to be moving on to a reset, to a bracket reset. But that comes next. We're going to be going to a short break, preparing for the grand final. So stay tuned as we are going to be back very shortly with the grands.